Hi, my name is Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube, and I'm getting very good at talking that thing good. <laughs> I talk good. Today, we are talking about enhancing a still inside of Fusion, making it seem like it's a little bit more motiony, more video-y. I don't know. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just chat. I think you're gonna like this. Let's go. I got an email from Paul at Wild Photo who takes these amazing wildlife photos and he wanted to enhance this picture of this crocodile. Here's how the picture was taken. and wanted to add some fog to the photo, kind of add a little bit of motion to it. He said, I got a bit stuck trying to make two lots of fog. Didn't really see the second one that I can tell. Thought one coming off the 45 degree angle like the heat of its body and then a general mist going from left to right. It'd also be nice to animate the bubbles. So let's see what we can do here in Fusion. He sent me the comp that he's been working on, and let's see what we're doing here. He has a rectangle mask that's really soft, just coming off of one side of the crocodile. And then he also has another mask that's going over kind of the middle, and then our render. This is about how I would do it, but one thing that's happening is that we're adding quite a bit of color correction here in the color page that is just really clarifying this and making it look good. And it's kind of hard to see that in the Fusion page, so, why don't we do something tricky to start out with? I'm gonna right click on this shot and go to generate LUT, 65 point cube. And I'll just put this on my desktop and we can actually use this LUT inside of Fusion to kind of preview our color grade. If we go up to DaVinci Resolve under preferences, under general, we have our LUT locations here. Let's just add desktop like a super pro person and hit save. And after we restart Resolve, we can go up here in our viewer this drop down and select croc LUT. And then when we click this little button, boom, there we have our color grade here that we can preview in Fusion. And it doesn't actually apply it twice, it just previews it here in the viewer. So we can actually see what the heck is going on. Cause I do like this color, it looks nice. So now we're doing okay. I'm also just gonna trim this a little bit in the edit page so that we can quickly see what's happening. Make this like six seconds long. And now we can preview things without having to preview like a whole minute of things. Because once we actually have this set up, it will continue to animate for as long as we want the shot, right? So if we're wanting two layers of fog here, our body heat fog and our regular fog, we're gonna wanna separate these in a couple different ways. Uh, an easy way to do that would be with color or with brightness. So, so why don't we actually start with, I'm just gonna hold shift and move this out. Let's start with the big fog that just goes from side to side and see how that looks. So there's the difference. We're kind of adding some of that fog back. So I think because we have this fog sort of in this upper left-hand corner, we might just wanna move our mask so that we can mostly fog this foreground. So what Paul's got set up here is a expression in the center of our noise. And what this basically does is as time goes by, it just moves the fog on the X axis. But this expression is moving it a little bit slow, I would say. So let's just make it divided by 1000. And let's see if we can see the fog there. We can actually kind of see it. There's something to be said about making things subtle, but you do actually want to be able to see that a little bit. I think that looks nice and tasteful. So that's gonna be the first thing. We're gonna adjust our mask. I'm just gonna make a new mask here. And maybe what we'll do is just draw a polygon mask, places where the other fog isn't going to be or where it isn't already in the still. So we're basically just gonna mask it to be everywhere except for this upper left. And then we're gonna soften this edge quite a bit, something like that. So now we have our fog rolling by the crocodile. And because it's a high res still, it's having a hard time playing it back on my system because I just got, I got me a humble system here but you get the idea. So that's one bit of fog, and now we're gonna have this other bit, which again, I'll probably just take away our other nodes and we'll merge this body heat node over the other one. And this, let's just go ahead and reset everything. I'm gonna take this expression, reset everything, and put that expression back in. But let's dial in the detail. Let's make it something like that maybe. Take the contrast down just a touch. And when it comes to fog, if you don't want the fog to be as intense, you can mess with the scale right? And so the more that you want to see the fog, the more down you'd want that scale to be. So I don't know, maybe something like this. And then if the fog is too intense, what we want to do is just take this merge and blend it down in the merge. And what I like to do is blend it all the way down and then push it up until you notice it, something like that. And then we'll take our mask and we'll just draw a little mask here on the left side of the frame, maybe bring it in and soften it out quite a bit. And now we should see that fog back there moving but you actually notice it because we've masked this foreground fog kind of around it so that it doesn't compete. 
And right now, this body heat fog is moving a little bit faster. It's moving about twice as fast as our regular fog. Maybe we want to make that even faster. So maybe 300. And let's see how this looks. Here we have the differences of our fog moving. You can see that here. We can see the foreground. And of course, depending on how you feel about it, you could make it faster or slower, but the idea is there. So that does it for the fog. Let's say we want to adjust this water, kind of make it look like, you know, it's water. It's in motion, right? One thing you can do for water effects is use a node called displace, which just kind of gives you that ripply effect. So I'm going to select media in one and hit shift spacebar and type DISP. And what we're going to want is DSP right there, displace. Now that we have displace added, it's not really going to be doing anything because we don't have a map to tell it where to displace things, which the great thing is we can use fast noise again, just drag that in like that. And what this will do is anywhere where it's white, it's going to move things and anywhere where it's clear or dark, it's not going to move things. So we can adjust things here in our noise, like our detail and our scale and everything to make sure we have just some nice kind of clouds here. And this displacement node is going to look where everywhere where it's white and displace it and everywhere where it's not and not really displace it. So let's change how it displaces things. Here where it says type, let's switch to X and Y and switch these X and Y channels to Luma. And what we're really going to be worried about is X refraction here because that's like the water ripple effect. See, when we move this, it gets all ripply. All right, we can just move this over a little bit. And that's just telling this how much to move it when something is white on the map. And then to animate this, all we have to do is animate the map. So with fast noise selected, we can just boost up this seethe rate, which will just change this over time like this. And look, it'll make things ripply. Believe it or not, ripply. See what we're getting at? But we don't want the crocodile to ripple. We just want the water to ripple. So all we have to do is on this displace node, just mask him out. Let's grab a ellipse and connect that to our displace node. I'll hit one on the keyboard so we can see our mask a little better. And then we're just going to move this mask around our crocodile here to mask him out. And we want everything except for what's inside. So I'll click on invert and we'll soften this edge quite a bit. I'm looking over here to see how that softening is working. And we'll just make it big enough to where it doesn't ghost his sides, you know, something like that. And now we should have a pretty good little rippling effect with our water. Pretty subtle, but that might be all we need. If you want it to be stronger, you can go to Displace and push up this X Refraction just a touch. Now it gets real ripply. So it's kind of moving those bubbles around also. So then when we put everything together, we got our nice little croc picture with our bubbles moving and our fog. And I think it's looking nice. There's a couple little problems we could tweak, but you get the idea, right? So there you go. That's how to enhance and add motion to a photo inside of Fusion. If you like this video, make sure to check out our other Fusion tutorials, which are right here. We even have a basics on how the heck Fusion works if you're just not familiar with it at all. Oh, baby. So good. Look at that croc just being scary. Oh, he's so scary. Did you like it? Hmm? Did it make you happy inside? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, there's more videos on fusion and making fancy things if you want right there. Do you love it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm not though. It's funny to me. And I have fun during these. I don't know if you guys do. Freaking haters posting comments. Get a life preserver. Go for a nice float down the river with some sodies.